everybody. Welcome back for another fun episode of Flinging Fun. Today we are going to make penguins and little soap dishes. So uh, the tools that will come in your kit are your white slip for construction, paint brushes, pin tool, and a popsicle stick. You'll also have whatever colors you've chosen um, for painting after your project is done. Great, so we're going to start with making our penguin. So how much clay you start with is kind of up to you if you want a big dish you're going to make a smaller penguin. Um, usually what we say is take your clay, maybe just kind of make it a little bit more of an oblong shape, and then you can tear it in half. So right now, if I wanted a bigger dish, this could be my dish and this could be my penguin. Um, and then what I wanna do with my dish clay is I wanna take my clay bag and stick it back in here and keep it nice and moist until I'm ready to use it. We don't want to leave our clay out. It'll probably get dry. We may need to sneak some pieces of it um, for more construction, which we can take a little ball out and do that. The side. So the first thing I'm going to do is to make the penguin. And I'm going to just kind of snowball and pat the clay into kind of a little bit of a cone, almost like a peanut. Maybe even kind of roll it. I've also got my sheet out on the table. So this is going to be my penguin head and body. So next thing I wanna do is I wanna really wanna make sure that these are hollow. So I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna push it up into the middle like that. And then I can go back and still kind of roll him and, and get him to be the shape that he needs to be. So he's just kind of like an egg Take a little bit of clay from here. I'm just gonna make sure he sits pretty good. And I can smooth them out with my fingers. Just kind of get rid of any of the finger marks or textures that I've made. And if your hand and clay isn't doing this and making it smooth, you can get a little bit of water, and that should help. If you get any crack lines, the water will help smooth those out and rehyd the, rehydrate the clay a little bit. So I'm just smoothing them out with my fingers. I've got my water here, just add my thumb in there. Just again, a little moisture kind of helps smooth some stuff out. I'm also kind of pinching around the base so that he's kind of curved a little bit more. Kind of squeezed in his neck, just kind of so that I have a separation between the body and the head. So how much you want to mess with your penguin shape is up to you. You know, a lot of it you're going to cover with some things and some paint. So um, how smooth his body is, is it going to really matter too much? Okay, it looks pretty cute. So I'm just going to kind of start working on some of my attachments. To make a nose, I'm just going to take a pinch off the clay. And then just kind of roll it in my hands, kind of rolling it one side more than the other. I can kind of tap that down. kind of rotate it in my fingers. And it kind of flattens that out. If it's really pointy at the tip, I'm just gonna pinch that off and make it a little less sharp. So now I'm just gonna start working on my attachments and pinching off some of the pieces for the clay for the nose. I'm gonna take a little pinch off and I'm gonna roll it like a coil. And then I'm gonna taper it on one side and taper it on the other side. We're actually gonna make a hole in his face and stick the whole thing in there rather than attaching it to the top of the surface. So that way it's less likely to crack off. For some feet, just gonna roll some balls. And with these, I'm gonna just tap in a little bit of water so they stay really soft. And then I'm going to just flatten them out with my hands. Maybe just roll them a little bit and I'll end up cutting into these with my pen tool. So they end up being about the size of nickels or so. Next I'm going to work on some eyeballs and that's the same thing as the eyeballs but they're just smaller. So a really small piece of clay, dab in some water, roll into your fingers, smush. 
And these I think are always kind of fun to sometimes do different sizes. Whatever shapes you kind of want them to be. Smoosh. Can always roll them a little bit too to make them a little bit more round on the edges. For his wing, just still got my coil. I'm just gonna take a little bit less of that. Kind of see where I want it to go. And I'm just going to pinch it with my fingers. Kind of make it a little bit wider on the top. So it's gonna kind of sit there. Grab a little bit more for the other guy. And I'm just taking them and kind of folding them to get them kind of into more of a, a coil shape, a little, little hot dog. Same thing, just kind of pinching it down, allowing it to get a little wider at the top. And I can always cut it down a little bit as well. This guy is gonna hold something, so I'm gonna maybe curl up his little paw, little wing. And I'm gonna see about him holding a little ice cream cone. So I'm just gonna cut off a little piece of a coil, rolling it on the side tapping it in there and then I'm going to use the back of this stick to kind of make a hole so that way I can drop some of my ice cream in there so I've kind of got an idea of where all my pieces are going to go those are going to be there I'll probably put a little hat on them as well so now I'm going to scratch and attach and put everything together. If I just left everything as is when I came back the next day to paint him, all of these will fall off because they aren't attached together. They're more like this on surfaces and we really want to get them to be like this. So I use my pen tool and now I start scratching the spots for his nose. I lost it. We're actually going to make an indent. I'll probably stick that one in first. I'm gonna scratch that up. Here's the nose again, just rolling on one side, rolling kind of on the other side. And we're gonna look at kind of fitting that in. So he's way too big right now. Cut that down in half. Kind of taper both ends of a coil down. Think about how that looks. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to scratch this part of the nose. Get out my clay slip. Stick that in there and I can still hand build with it as it's in there and mold it. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more squarish. Next, I've got the eyes. I've already scratched his body. So now I just need to scratch the attachments. Generous amount of slips. So really kind of goober the stuff on. Got 
my eyeballs. I'll probably paint the, the black pupil once I start doing that process. Next, I'm gonna get and cut my feet. I was just cutting little triangles out of them. One. One triangle. Two. Gonna really scratch the back sides of these. Scratch the front part of my penguin body. Generous amount of clay slip. And I'm going to really pinch them together and see if I can't even blend them so that they're more one piece rather than two separate. So kind of really kind of focusing on pushing from the inside and pinching on the outside. Feet are the worst. Those are the things that fall off the most. So the more we can blend and really stick together now hopefully the better odds we are and plus these are going to stick in a, in a little container in a soap dish which is great which is why we'll have less chances of things actually falling off and losing them it's kind of just pushing down on his body it's starting to come together looking pretty cute same thing i'm just going to take one of his wings and just kind of taper up the top so that it's a little more blended Scratch, scratch, scratch. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Just lightly blending and molding with my fingers and my hands. Next side, he's already kind of curved for that shape, so it's perfect. And slowly blending the two together, compressing the clay together. You can also use your popsicle stick for this. It really kind of helps blend the two corners together. Especially places you can't reach with your fingers. And you can use paint brushes and things to help blend and smooth out any cracks or any kind of clay blemishes that you may see. Extra slip, extra water. Next he's gonna hold the ice cream cone so I'm gonna scratch and I'm also just gonna leave it as a texture which is kind of fun scratch the inside of his wing Have the clay slip. Kind of drop that down. On the inside of the cone and one part of the ice cream ball.
And when you drop that in, drop it and kind of twist. And kind of go back and forth. That's usually when you know things are kind of got adjusted. I think we're going to try one more on top. Scratch on the top of that one. Roll in another ball. Slip on that one. Scratching on this one. And kind of twisting on there. And then going back with that paintbrush and kind of cleaning up extra slip. And I'm just going to put a couple of pupil holes so I can kind of know where I'll paint. And I think I'm going to make a little hat as well. So taking just a small, probably less than a golf ball size piece, I just collect all my other pieces. Drop it in a little bit of water. It just gets a little bit softer. And this shape, I'm gonna do a cone. Just kinda blotting the outside, rolling like this. And similar to the body shape, we're gonna stick our thumb in there again. And then pinch out the sides. Kind of start to see how it's going to sit on his head. And just like the body shape, I'm going to use my fingers to kind of smooth it out. I think I'm going to texture it once I get it on his head. So just kind of working on the top here. Got a little bit more water and I could kind of squeeze the clay up. Just kind of going back and forth. And that way I can eventually twist it. And by using water, when I twist, everything should stay nice and intact. But this part, you definitely need to be careful not to pull too fast. You can pull off the top of the clay. I think I'm gonna set mine a little off center. So before I'm just going to do a little bit of texturing while I have it in my hands. Ooh, how do I want to do this? I'm just going to kind of support it with my inside hand. And I'm just doing a little bit of texture around kind of the top or the bottom of it for kind of the fuzzy part that's off and on hats. You could also stick it and probably just rotate it this way and that way sometimes dents it so you may have to pull it back out a little bit. Perfect. You can see that it fits there pretty good. What I'm going to do this time though is I'm going to put a layer of slip kind of on the inside of his hat by Donna just rotating my brush. So that I have it in there and then I'm going to just tap it on his head and kind of push but then pull off and what that's going to give me is a little headband of slip so that I know where to scratch and attach now so then I'm going to go back and scratch through all that slip
and scratch through the slip on the hat. And I'm going to apply more slip again. I'm going to press those two back together again. Kind of rotate them around, make sure that I've covered all of that. Looks good. If I've got slip that oozed out of the hat, I can just go around and wipe it with my paintbrush. Next, I'm just gonna give him some dots and circles on his hat. So I'm just gonna take back into my pen tool. Just kind of press in some circles. And I kind of twist the tool as I, as I push it into the clay that helps release it as well. So the penguin's done. If I want to, I can kind of outline, you know, where his belly is now, or I can just wait till I paint and do that with just a paintbrush. for my little container that he's gonna sit in. First, I'm just gonna kind of get the clay warm again by just kind of snowballing it in my hand. If it's been sitting out, probably wanna add some water. It's actually, you should have mentioned that you should keep the clay just in plastic until you're ready to construct it. So once I got my snowball, just going to kind of press it against the table and then start kind of squeezing it with my hand kind of both hands and I'm just trying to get to be a, a bigger saucer so just kind of rotating it out and add a little bit more water whenever you add water it's just kind of surface water it should never be really soaking the piece or you know, sitting in water. And I kind of do that to the back side, just. And as I eventually get over to the sides and as I make them bigger, I'm just gonna start pinching the sides up and that's gonna start to curve the clay and making it into some more of this little saucer. Let's see about if he fits in there. Looks good. So I'm just kind of smoothing the clay out with my finger. <coughs> And then kind of pinching the side walls up. And the side walls don't have to be too tall, just enough where we'll be able to put some glass in there and it'll keep it and not uh, leak out. So you definitely need to not have, um, there must not be any holes. So I know that we've called these some of these soap dishes and you may be tempted to put holes in your container, but if you put holes, then we can't put the glass in there because otherwise it will leak all out into our kiln. So lastly, I'm just gonna kind of use some water 
around my edges. They got most likely might got, got a little cracky by forming. So then I'm just kind of smoothing and softening. paying attention to the outside of the container and same thing smoothing and softening any any rough spots or any kind of cracks in the in the clay Pretty happy with my little container. I can always squeeze it in if it starts to flare out too much. Just kind of hug the side walls in, kind of rotate it a little bit. Just taking my hands and kind of slowly patting them in a little bit. Once I get here, you're gonna to wanna to flip it over and with just finger supporting this side, you wanna take a pencil and write your number that has been assigned to you and maybe your last name so that we can make sure we find these guys get back to you. That'll help us identify your pieces. Next, then I'm just going to kind of see where he sits in there and get ready to scratch and attach him. I can do the same method as I did with the hat by just adding slip to his bum and to the bottom of him. Tapping them in there, kind of pulling them back out and kind of seeing a little bit of the slip ring. Scratching and attaching uh, vertical pieces are not as tricky as horizontal ones that can kind of snap off. Gravity works towards our advantage. The glaze is all going to melt and seal everything as well. But just in case you try to pick up the body and not the container when you paint, this will hopefully keep them together. But I do recommend as you paint, anytime you handle, um, to pick up both together and not just one. Got all that scratched. Add more slip, just kind of tap that in there. I'm just kind of pressing him down by the side of his body, twisting him a little bit, kind of pushing down his feet, and kind of getting him in there. And then right now you'll know if he's attached, you can pick up both together, support once you lift up a little bit. And there you go. Now that I've got him all attached to the base, there's one final thing I want, and that's just to put a little air hole, a vent hole, in the bottom so that the clay and gases and materials can escape during the firing process. So just a little hole in the bottom, go straight up into um, his belly, and so that the glass and everything will stay in the dish. Now once he dries for a few hours or overnight, you'll be able to paint him. Um, you'll use your colors that are provided. They are dull, uh, but they are ceramic paints, so they do brighten up as the process goes in. So once they are fired, your black, even though it looks kind of grayish or brownish, will turn out black. Orange looks good. Uh, we suggest that you do at least two to three coats of your paint just to get kind of really thick colors, especially with that black one. So go over it a few times. So we got this guy all painted. He's very fragile, so I wanna make sure I'm using extra precautions, getting them back to us. Uh, a little bit of bubble wrap or just either just something around him so they can't fall over. Again, nice that they're on these little dishes. Now when you get back to us, we will take glass after the fi first firing and we will put glass beads inside your little container. And that will look like water, 
and some fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Happy creating.